And then the sun comes out in the theater. See, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't it know because I haven't seen it. I haven't experienced I'm it. I'm sorry because I, I mean, didn't know I th- it changed your life like some life altering drugs. It made me into a theatrical person. Uh, Why is K pop so popular, but then the K pop musical shut down in two weeks? How come nobody liked it? We got to talk about this. This is big news because there was a groundbreaking K pop musical that released on Broadway. And uh, just after two weeks of opening, it shut down because it couldn't sell tickets. And honestly, it wasn't making money. In fact, it was losing money. So we got to talk about it because K-pop is this global phenomenon as a genre. Everybody loves it, right? However, it did horrible on Broadway. Yeah, I think there was a lot of micro takeaways, a lot of macro takeaways that would be useful for anybody trying to transfer over an Asia product to the U.S. market, specifically a niche like Broadway. But first off, Andrew, we got to run a clip of the show because, Andrew, a lot of... New York Times, LA Times, they're all wondering why it shut down so quick, but we gotta show a clip to even just get a sense of what it was. Okay. It looks like a K pop talent show. I mean, I feel the truth. All right, so I mean, that was pretty much it, David. Uh, right off the bat, the dance numbers look good. I think the singing is good. They have Luna, who was a real K-pop artist, you know. So the singing is legit. So it's not like uh, like pre-recorded and right, stuff right, like that. Right, right, right. This real is this is pretty tight to me. I mean, obviously it is in Korean. I'm not a 45 year old white lady from Wisconsin making my you know biannual trip with my sisters to Broadway. <laughs> But, I mean, immediately just watching the clip, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. And, you know, that's probably what they were thinking. They probably were thinking that somebody like myself or somebody, you know, even in this range would, like, go and see their first Broadway show. But that, honestly, from what I heard, super did not happen. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's so many reasons why it didn't work. And uh, it was, like, really a bad fit. I think it was a bad fit. Not that it was a bad show because I didn't go watch the show and I heard some good things about it. However, if you just think about the crossover of people who are into K-pop or want to sit through a two-hour K-pop concert, essentially, and the people who go to Broadway shows, the Venn diagram is very small. The crossover is very small of that. Hold on. Are you saying that someone who loves The Lion King, The Book of Mormon, whatever other Broadway shows there are, would go to go to a list of Broadway BTS shows because I can't because I can't name that many. You know what probably would have been a better idea, and I don't know if they could have had access to this IP, is to make it a JYP or like BTS musical. And then Ooh, that, because BTS when you make it broadly about crazy. K-pop, you're taking out all the stars, the brand names. It's about like no names that are in the industry. So anyways, there's a bunch of reasons, but uh, yeah, it's, people just were not interested by this story. But there was a 2017 version of this that was off Broadway that w- didn't make it to the big Broadway theater yet that got some good reviews that was more immersive, that was yeah. more interesting. I mean, I think that's the nature with a lot of things. Like some things, they just work better as an underground thing than a overground, like commercial radio hit. It's almost like, you know, this is like an older reference, but like Talib Kweli, he never worked as a radio artist, but he was huge as an underground rapper. Yeah. Um, and what are some of the other Broadway shows that they're even showing right now? Because honestly, uh, I'm right, not So these familiar. are the other Broadway shows that they're like competing with because basically... Uh, okay, and Juliet, Romeo and Juliet, Moulin Rouge. Okay, that's from like France, and that was written in like what, 1680? The Phantom of the Opera, and when was that written? The 1700s. Uh, the Lion King. I don't know when that story's from, maybe I mean, 500 w- years ago. Wicked's been in there for like years on Broadway. Beetlejuice actually just got canceled, I believe. Um, K pop is now canceled. Chicago, of course, Aladdin, MJ, Michael Jackson, King of Pop. Tough one right. to So, I with. mean, I would say most of these shows look white or based off something European yeah. or from Europe. I mean, let's be real. Broadway is pretty white. Theater is pretty white. So, I think that the creators were like, hey, I grew up loving Broadway and I'm Korean and I can write about this K-pop show, you know, and I want to share that love. And I'm not saying that's wrong. That's not wrong. However, I don't think everybody else shares that love. Like, the average K-pop fan is 15 to 20 years old. That they don't go to Broadway. Well, they're not going to make the trip to New York City, to Manhattan, expensive Uber ride. I mean, where are they even coming from? I'm assuming New I mean, Jersey. Maybe their parents don't even want them to go to New York City right now. Think about it. Like, we're of the demographic that theoretically should have gone to this show, and I had heard about it. I know a few people who went, but ultimately... I, and I heard I, there was I a know. whole bunch of drama around it, so I believe one of the creators of the show kind of blamed Asians for, like, not feeling comfortable in the theater environment or not wanting to pay those prices. And then they are also... the cast accused the New York Times reviewer of being racist 
but because he gave him a negative review, even though he did give the off-Broadway one a positive review. So it's tough to say, in my opinion, that it's racist if he gave the Asian-driven off-Broadway one a positive review and then this one a negative review. All right, David, uh, I think we talked a lot about it from a technical standpoint. And we're, again, we're not experts on K-pop or Broadway. You we guys didn't know see this. the show. We didn't no, see I the... didn't see the show. That's why I'm not talking about the show. I can't break down the flow of the show. You did see the Lion King though, Andrew. So technically, Andrew, you have a lot more experience in this world than me. Yo, I, the Lion King, Dave, there's a reason why it's running for like its 25th year on Broadway or something like that, okay? It is a great show. I just can't wait to be king. I just, uh, I really like that monologue, that opening song from Rent, that 200, 365, 2,000 hours. Dude, I'll tell you this, in the in the Lion King, man, that's, that stuff will make you cry, man. When she starts out, and then the sun comes out in the theater. See, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't it know because I haven't seen it. I haven't experienced I'm it. I'm sorry because I, I mean, didn't know I it changed your life like some life altering drugs. It made me into a theatrical person. Uh, but David, what what are like the things people can take away? Because because I think this is a a good lesson in fit because K-pop. Everybody loves K-pop. When you go to a K-pop concert in LA, does everybody love no, K-pop? No, no, no. I'll say this. No, no, not everybody. Not of all ages. Sorry, but uh, all there's fans of all types of people. When you go to a K-pop concert, there's like a lot of Latino, Black, White, and Asian, right? Right. Everybody. But I wouldn't necessarily say they're like the mainstream either. Sure, it's not sure, the sure. same crowd that loves NBA it, Young Boy. It's, and it's getting not the bigger same crowd, though. Yeah. BTS really broke through. Uh, but anyways, David, what can people take away from it? Like, I think number one, these are the macro takeaways that anybody who's trying to move a like foreign cultural product into the US can take away. Number one, Andrew, I think that Asian American audiences are still struggling with the in-person performance. In terms of something modern like Broadway, stand-up comedy, you, Andrew, you've been doing a lot more stand-up around New York. Yeah. A, a lot of non-Asians will randomly pop into a show. They don't even know it's Asian night, and they're slated to see like 20 Asian comics exactly. in a row. But they just do it because them and their friends yeah. love seeing stand-up just on a random yeah. Tuesday Dude, night for two hours. non-Asians watch stand-up, and particularly no, saying, white Andrew, people. Do Asians do that? No. Asians do not watch stand-up comedy that much. The only time I see a lot of Asians are out when we go to the Ronnie Chang show or the Ali Wong show, these big names that are the hyper Uncle successful. The Uncle Roger show, the Russell yeah, Peters show. Uncle Roger, exactly, but that's when you see the Asians come out. Before a regular show of just like amateur comedians, they're not coming out. Anyways, what's the next reason? And uh, I think that that's what the creator of K-pop the musical was kind of blaming it on, saying that like, I know Asians are scared of the theater. I know they don't feel welcome. They don't feel like it's their space. Like the narrative supports them, but they needed to come out. I, I, but it was like, what do you mean we needed to come out to? I don't think that it, it's very difficult to alter their behavior. Like Asians will go out to see a real K-pop show. They do not want to see necessarily a Broadway show about the K-pop industry. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I'll just say this. Like I, I don't know about Asians being scared of the theater, but the theater and the whole theater culture and Broadway in general is very, very white. It's, it is, it is not in a bad way, but, even Hamilton, yeah, but even Hamilton, which is like a super hip hop show. Well, relatively to yeah, the relative hip hop show. And everybody, there's a lot of people rapping and a lot of the cast is black and brown. Even though the rap's like it, Alexander Hamilton and 1742. They're flowing, yeah. they're flowing yeah. though. But yeah, even then, a lot of the audience is probably going to be uh, more Caucasian. Um, you need things in English. I think that anybody who is coming to the U.S. as a foreign cultural product needs to speak anywhere from 80 to 90% English. It doesn't mean that large functional portions of the storyline are not in another language. Words, phrases, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The names. But you can't just be like speaking in another language because, Andrew... People in America don't even support British comedians that with strong accents. You better sound like Ricky Gervais at the no. most, because Ricky Gervais actually, uh, I'd say his British accent is very understandable to Americans. Mm -hmm. But literally, if you come from like Liverpool, you come from uh, Scotland, Birmingham, Birmingham oh. Scotland, American audiences that are white oh. might even have ancestors from Scotland. They're not gonna like it. <laughs> that was a terrible Scottish. But yeah, you know what I mean? Because America is just a country where it's like it's just English centric. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Andrew, you cannot have a product on display that is so close to the original product. So it can't be like a K-pop concert for K-pop fans when they could just pay that equal amount of money and maybe see an actual K-pop concert. 
Yeah, that's true because you because now you're competing and now to be honest, the K-pop performers in this musical are not a tier K-pop artists because they're not K-pop artists. For, they are actors and singers who are talented, but they're not the K-pop artists. Well, it's so. probably to be honest, maybe a lot of people who had K-pop dreams but they didn't want to move to Korea. Oh, maybe they went through the farming okay. system and they got weeded out of the Correction, minor Luna, who is a K-pop artist, is in the show, but she's like the main one. Um, you can't have a product that's so close to the original and I would compare it to the Korean corn dogs. Those are like very significantly different from an American corn. David, dog. is that like opening up a Korean fried chicken spot in between a KFC and a Popeyes? You'd think in the South. You'd no, think that's like saying yeah. opening up in Nashville. And you'd think that'd be a good idea because you're like, oh, everybody loves fried chicken in this plaza. That's great. But now it's like it, it's too close to the thing. You honestly, I, you want to put it somewhere let's else? Let's just say this: I wouldn't serve expensive Korean corn dogs at the state fair. That's like was established in like 1862, oh. where everybody's like, "Man, I'm waiting for them." Wait, so oh, you're saying American kind of corn dogs? Like, oh, what's this thing with the fries on it? David, you're saying that the uh, Korean corn dogs aren't really gonna make a uh, an appearance at the Coney Island uh, hot dog eating festival next <laughs> yeah. year? I think location matters a lot because America is so hyper diverse. And uh, for example, Andrew, Mr. Pizza is a Korean pizza chain that does super wacky pizzas. They're very expensive. They got like sweet potato crust with the hot dogs. They are good. They're good. They're delicious. They're expensive pizzas, by the way. But they're weird. It's like $65 for a pizza. (laughs) They shut down almost like 90% of their locations in LA and New York. Yeah. And I think they only exist in like Korean enclaves. First of all, we ate at the Mr. Pizza in Little Tokyo when it opened in LA. We went there for sure. I I also want to say as, as far as the musical goes, I feel like the musical maybe might do better on the West Coast, like in LA, when where more of California is familiar with Korean culture and K-pop in general. But then why wouldn't they just go watch the copious amounts of actual K-pop concerts that are there? I, I'm not I'm just saying I think it would do better, but I'm not saying it would still stick around for years. Yeah. I mean I saw this Reddit comment that just went on a huge rant about like the East Coast and New York City not supporting like ASEAN, like things directly from Asia. I do think they require more tweaking for the East Coast. Mm -hmm. I do think the East Coast, you know, New York is the capital of America. They always say LA is the entertainment capital of the world, but New York is the entertainment capital of America. More like, you know, Anglo New World. Yeah, I mean, theater is such a different art form. It's a very like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of Young millennials, to be honest, I mean, I know people who go to Broadway shows, some of the Book of Mormon, and, and you know the big shows. I've been to a couple, but like, it's not the main thing that we go to. You're like, you have TikTok now, you have YouTube, you have Netflix, you have concerts. Bro, Asians are going to Omakase. Do, do you have bro. EDM concerts? You have K-pop oh, concerts. Well, first of all, Asians are giving all their money to to Zed every time yeah. he comes. And you every- have Brooklyn Mirage. You got the thing, the, the, the EDC. Oh my god. Darn it, darn it. Um. But last but not least, Andrew, my final takeaway, and this is for anybody who's doing it, and this is where I got to give huge kudos to uh, Helen Park, the other people who threw this concert. Justin I, I don't, Kim, I don't want anybody to think that, like, you know, we were, like, dissing this thing um, because, obviously, I didn't even see it, but, and, and I, but I think it was great because, at the end of the day, people still need to take the gamble and potentially even lose a bunch of money because this is what progress takes. Literally. Yeah. If people never fail... It's a good point. How can you fail forward? It's a good point because I think like we are in this video, we're literally talking about what we can learn from this. Again, we didn't watch the show. I'm sure it's great. Maybe it's not and, amazing. And, but it's not, and it's not to say that they can't bring this show maybe yeah. to another platform off yeah. Broadway again. They can start traveling with it, you know, move this yeah. bus, move this move, that move. They can still, you know, do good yeah. with it. But it's like, just because this experiment is over and it kind of like blew up or whatever, it doesn't mean that they are not going to be instrumental even in maybe if they're a part of the second project that does break through. Yeah, I'm sure maybe there's like an Asian play right now. I don't know if it's Miss Saigon. That's, I don't know if that really counts as Asian. But anyways, there's like Asian characterized plays, I'm sure right now that are looking at this and being like, okay, Yo, well, well, what are we going to do differently? Can we learn anything from this? What do you think about the argument that this was such a monumental play because it didn't have to do with a white savior? Miss Saigon, Butterfly, I think uh, the king and I, you could argue, I mean, I think it's a white lady who gets with the Thai king. You know Uh, what I mean? I I think again, again, like, like, you know how Korean material does amazing on Netflix? Because Netflix is a global platform that's affordable for everybody. Right. But it doesn't do, K-pop apparently does not do well on Broadway, which has high barriers to entry. You have to be in New York. You have to pay, what, 50, 60, 70 dollars for a ticket. You have to be in there for two and a half hours. I mean, by the way, hip-hop, 
in general, doesn't really perform on Broadway either until Hamilton. Yeah. Like, that's ha- why Hamilton was considered groundbreaking. Because it's they, a mixture. Had, they had brought, like, yeah, hip-hop but it, but it, energy. Uh, but it, again, is not just, like, a full-on hip-hop show. No. It's not, like, a, a rap cypher. <laughs> just you know, have only. a rap cypher on Broadway. Yeah. I mean, maybe Wu-Tang the musical, but I, actually, even then, I think the crossover is actually getting smaller and smaller. So, anyways, but... um, We flew here from Wisconsin, and me and my sister said we were like, watching the first thing we could get yeah. tickets to, and it's the RZA, GZA. So, so, my point was that on Netflix, it does really well, because I think Netflix is not super white-centric. Like the content, like you go to Netflix well, for content that's not white. Yeah, that's literally why you go to Netflix because it has all this other content that is also cool that has different languages. The heist, it's all in Spanish, and then there's this Squid Game. Narcos, was in Narcos was in Spanish. I like there's I watch all these shows in different languages, French comedians, all this everything. So I'm saying that's why it's thriving on Netflix, but but for those for the same reason it's not thriving on Broadway because Broadway is just like the demographic of people who walk through those doors are who they are. You can't yeah. change it. It's very hard to change. Yeah. I mean, it'd be tough to open up like a uh, Korean street food place serving yeah. like kimchi I, fried rice and like hot dog in like uh, Connecticut, like Greenwich, Connecticut. Yeah. Probably I mean, wouldn't, listen, probably we're Asian. Wouldn't. We want to support Asian things. But even me, I could not break my regular frame to go to that show. Maybe if someone had brought me and like paid for my ticket, I would definitely go. But it's just not something that I'm like even pushing myself to do. So I have to admit that, right? Yeah. Of course. But so. anyway, like we said, man, kudos. I do think there's a lot of implications for a lot of things. But yeah, obviously I hope that, you know, we can break through, but pro- uh, progress is not like a linear or exponential thing. It, it, there's obviously a lot of plateaus and false starts and you need to try twice to break through. So let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Why did the K-pop Broadway musical fail? But K-pop as a format itself is strong as it's ever been. And what can we learn you know, about other art forms that require in-person, you know, attendance, such as Asian stand-up comedy. Yeah. Please watch more Asian stand-up comedy. And just been doing more stand-up. Watch Please stuff. watch. Please go to the Asian amateur shows. Ah! All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We are the Hot Pop Boys. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.